It's Kevin Johnson of Leverage Consulting bringing you the Resilient Entrepreneur Podcast number 29. I'm glad to have you back, and this one's going to be a fun one, an interesting one, and you'll know why in just a minute. One of the things I am working on with clients right now would be their 2021 goals. And you might think right now, well, 2021 goals. And and for some of you, think when you create your own goals, you're going to base it off of, well, what did we do this year? And we all know that 2021 or 2020 was just an absolute abomination. And we're not even done with it yet. And as I'm recording this podcast, we don't even, we can't even count ballots and votes. We don't even know what's going on with our election. And I'm sure some of you probably felt that way earlier this year when our governors and different uh, uh, governmental agencies were telling us we couldn't go to work. So some of us were, or some of you were out of work. We were not knowing what was going to go on. And I'd say on average, many of the people who are listening to this may have been out of work for six to eight weeks. And in that time frame, some folks were actually still able to work, but I think we can all agree that 2020 was is just a year that is we can't compare it to anything else. And I really don't believe that any of us should be using this as the the baseline or springboard for 2021. And again, if we've taken off excessive amounts of time for COVID. If we have um, had changes in patterns, and we're, we will have to deal with continued changes in patterns into 2021 and possibly for the whole year. However, I will say when we're looking to create these goals for next year, we should not use this crazy year as the baseline. What we should be doing is creating a, a projection or creating goals that are really drawing out your utopia or at least drawing out what you would consider to be a strong um, projection for next year or a strong just set of goals for next year. And the way I like to explain it to clients is that we are we are drawing a destination. So if I were to tell you we're going to uh, we're going to draw out a vacation for you. We're going to list everything out that you want to do. I'm sure you would not hold back. You would not sit back and say, well, I could do a staycation. No, you would come up with some crazy ideas about, well, if if money was no object, well, I want to I want to go to New Zealand and I want to do this or I want to fly to Australia and I want to die of the Great Barrier Reef. I want to go to Indonesia and go scuba diving there. I want to um, go to the Caribbean and I want to do this. I want to go to Italy I'm going to spend two weeks just learning how to cook authentic Italian food. And while I'm there, I want to do this, this, and this. And you, you, you see how we're, we're designing this thing that is big and it's audacious. And we need to have the same thought process when we're creating goals for our business, which is technically our greatest investment. You can give all the money in the world to your investment advisors. You can give all the money in the world. Uh, you can think about your house. You can think about all these things. But you have this asset that is your business. And even if you're a, uh, you know, if you're a manager or you have a job within a business where we should have goals, then we should be thinking the same way. So those goals we should visualize as being the destination. We're drawing a picture of where we plan on landing by the end of 2021. And then we really need to look at the strategies and activities that we're going to use in 2021 as the actual plane ticket or our transportation to get there. Because the, the really, if you create a set of goals without an idea of what we're going to do to get there, really all you have is a really nice brochure for a sandals resort somewhere in the Caribbean. That's it. That's all you have. However, if you have a set of goals that are very high level and you have an idea of what we're setting out to achieve, and that might be anything from production to new customers, patients, and clients. It might be a number of houses you want to build. It could be how many number of dental implants you want to plant place in a year. 
It could be any number of things. But then we have to have the strategies and the ideas that the activities that we're going to implement day to day, week to week, month to month until we get to the end of 2021 and we can say we made it. We're in Italy and we're cooking with olive oil now. Okay. So we need, we, when you are creating those 2021 goals, I would say go back to previous years and use those more of that baseline. But we still really do need to think about 2021 and what has happened and season or flavor what happened in 2018 and 2019 with what happened in 2020 and then create those 2021 goals. And I will tell you, even though you may want to throttle those things back, even though there's a, a great deal of unknown right now with our economy and government and other things, you should not draw a picture where we're holding back. You should not draw out a set of goals where we're holding back and thinking, well, but what if? Because if you do that, you're, you, even if you, for example, if you said, I want to produce 2.5 million, if, if, if 2020 had not happened the way that it has, and you said, I want to produce 2.5 million as a solo producer in 2021, think of it this way. If, if you were of the mindset that, well, that might be too aggressive and I want to throttle it back, let's just say 1.9 because we just don't know what's going to happen. And you and your team set a goal for 1.9 and you fall behind and you, only, and you do 1.8. Well, that, those are good, respectable numbers. But what if you stuck to your guns and said, guys, we're going to do 2.5 million. And let's just say you still fall short of that and you come in at 2.3, okay? You're still $200,000 behind your goal. However, you're still several hundred thousand dollars above what you would have done if you came in with a lower goal. And sometimes when you put those more aggressive goals in there, we tend to work harder. It puts a little fire in the belly. It, 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 we don't sit back and just work at a moderate pace. We work at a pace like we want to go to the Caribbean or we want to go to New Zealand. So when you sit down to create your goals for 2021, think very hard about that destination. Think about how you're going to drive the results in 2021, but taking into account that the 2020 year may be 10%, no more than 20% of your consideration, I think, should be on 2020. It should be on some of the previous years. And just just take 2020 into account in your decision making. But I would still push kind of hard for the more aggressive goals. And then, again, the one piece that I, I often find as being a huge missing piece for many business owners is just the rock solid strategies and the who in in relation to who's going to actually implement these things who's actually going to use the activities and the strategies to actually get us to our destination so that's your podcast 29 the resilient entrepreneur podcast 29 on your 2021 goals it we're still in november and now's a really great time to start hammering these things out. That way you've got them. So when you walk into uh, January 1st, you've already got your goals. You're ready to go. And there's nothing saying you can't start knocking out some of that stuff right now. But you'll also have some time over. We have several holidays between now and the beginning of the year that you would have some time to actually sit down and work on some of these and the great thing is you'll have time over the holidays to work on these. You've got Thanksgiving, you've got Christmas, many of you take time off for some of those, and just taking some time for yourself to work on these in the interim to, or in some of your downtime just to hammer some of these things out so you actually have some formal goals and formal strategies that support those goals so you have a phenomenal 2021. So there's your Resilient Entrepreneur podcast number 29. Stay tuned because I've got another one coming up that's actually a hot button for me.